Hi guys, welcome to the third video of the Golang and React full stack to do application project series. In the first video, we saw the demo and the approach on how we'll build the project. The second video, we started creating our client and server folders. In the client folder, uh, it was a React application, and then we created, uh, we worked on our app.js, and then we created this new component to do list, and we were working on it. <coughs> In this third video, we'll we'll work mostly on the server side, but there are a couple of things that I want to do in the um, React in this React component. So we'll just do those basic things, and then we'll head over to our um, server side. All right. So here, I all I need to I just need to create a form which has the ability to submit something, right? So this is just the basic uh, structure I want to just uh, get it on. So here I'll say div class name is equal to row, and obviously it'll have a closing div as well later on and here I want to have a form that will again have a closing form tag the form will have on submit property this dot on submit And here you'll have um, an input element. And on a separate line, I'll write type is equal to text name is equal to task on change this dot on change and then you'll have a value property this is a basic simple HTML with a little bit of JSX and we'll have this dot state dot task so we already have um, a task value in our state for this component and the value that we'll get from this input element we'll just basically assign it uh, we will have it in this dot state task we'll assign it to value all right and it'll be a fluid component and we'll have placeholder text which will be simply create task create task all right so that's it i don't think i want to work on it uh, anymore and um, what we can do now is we can start switching to our server side so open up your server and then here in the server i want to create three different folders the first is middleware the second folder is models and the third is routes uh, we can call it router actually we'll have the entire logic for all our router or uh, the complete you know routing uh, logic uh, <coughs> Now, make sure that you don't make these folders inside each other by mistake and make sure that they're at the same level inside the server folder, right? So let's close up all the other files of our client and inside middleware, you'll just have a file called middleware.co. So we'll say middleware.co and inside your models, you'll just have a file called models.go and inside your router, you'll just have one file called router.go so what we can do is we can start with the models which is uh, usually quite straightforward right so the model we'll say here it's it's uh, it belongs to package model so that we can import it properly easily in our um, main.go file and all the other files so yeah so one thing obviously uh, we need is the main.go file in our main.go file we want to have package main and we'll import a couple of packages and then we'll have our func main for importing we'll have fmt log and net slash http and um, we also need the router here so I think it's github.com slash akhil slash uh, golang react to slash router 
that's how I can access my router. All right. But since we are giving it uh, a name, a package name, we can also just say Golang React to in slash router. Since we are giving it, uh, we'll give it a package name, package router. All right. So we'll try both approaches and see which one works. Anyhow. So here we'll have our func main. Here we'll say r is equal to router dot router. We'll create the router. So the logic for router, like I said, will be in our file router file. And we'll have a function called router, which will help us create the router. And here we'll say fmt dot print ln starting the server on port 9000 and we can start the server listen and serve 9000 comma r so this we're doing to basically start the server and i want to enclose this in log dot fatal so that if there's a fatal error we can handle it so that basically completes our main.go file. So this file is complete and now we'll head over to our models file like we were working on it. And here we'll say import go.mongodb.org slash mongo driver slash json slash primitive so we'll be storing our tasks in mongodb so that's why we need this uh, driver so we'll create a struct to do list struct and we'll have id task and status so in case uh, you haven't seen any of my other videos and you don't know what a struct is, struct is basically your own data type, type that you can create in Golang. So um, so we're creating our own data type called to-do list and it'll have these three things. It'll have an ID, it'll have a task, it'll have a status, right? ID will be unique mostly. So task will be the name of the task. So that'll clearly be string. Status will be like, you know, it's complete or not complete. So it'll be like a Boolean. And ID will be primitive, which is this. Basically, we're using the Mongo driver dot object ID. D is capital here. Now, Golang is not like JavaScript. It cannot understand JSON uh, on its own. So, um, so it, it basically needs structs to understand the data types. And it needs something. Struct is like, you know, here in this case, model is like the middle layer uh, i won't call it the middle layer but i would call it uh, the, the you know something that's between your a database you know which which is in json and your golang which is uh, which does not understand json right so here uh, when you define a struct you have to also tell uh, golang that what that uh, data point is going to look like when the data comes from uh, the database so it'll be id comma omit empty and then we'll also tell uh, java uh, golang how it looks in bson mod mode so it'll be id comma again omit empty and for this again it'll be stored as a task in the database and we'll say omit empty and this will be stored as status in the database so we'll say omit empty cool so uh, just um, as a pointer these are back ticks this is like the first button in your uh, you know numbers keyboard on top just below the function keys all right, so these are the backticks here. So it's enclosed in backticks, and uh, you have given the JSON. And for the ID, you have to also give it the BSON ID. All right, for uh, MongoDB. So now your Golang 
pro project or your program can understand you know what uh, it needs to work with id task and status and the um, data types like string and boolean that golang understands and then now these are the values that the database will have so golang now you know understands like uh, which uh, the database talks which language and i'm talking which language and which data types are they exactly so uh, golang now understands everything with the help of this struct and that's why we create these models all right and now when we actually work with these models in our routers we'll uh, marshal and unmarshal between them so that we can uh, you know uh, understand that data so i'm just explaining this, this to you and uh, in case you haven't watched any of my other videos i have more than 100 videos on, on golang on my channel and uh, i've covered this in in a lot of detail basically in, in so many uh, so many videos right so uh, what i'll do is i'll keep this video short and i'll end this here and then in the next video we'll uh, go ahead and we'll start working on the other files like router and middleware and all those files and then we'll do some work with our client side as well and um, so i'll see you in the next episode and do subscribe to this channel so that you come to know when the next video of this series comes out thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next episode